हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू माय चैनल इंजीनियर्स एकेडमी डू हिट द सब्सक्राइब बटन इफ यू हैव डन इट येट नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम सो नाउ लेट्स से दैट द टेंशन इन केबल ए बी इज लेट्स से टी वन द टेंशन इन केबल ए सी इज लेट्स से टी टू एंड द टेंशन डिवेलप इन केबल ए डी इज लेट्स से टी थ्री उज मैग्नीट्यूड इज के and the force developed in the antenna tower at point a is let's say um represented by capital f right to solve this problem since the system is in equilibrium we have to find t1 t2 t3 and force f as a cartesian vector we have to represent these as a cartesian vector so t1 cartesian vector is equal to t1 magnitude times the unit vector and t1 is acting from a to b so the unit vector must be acting from a to b and we can write that t1 and the unit vector from a to b is the position vector from a to b divided by its magnitude so this is the position vector divided by the magnitude so now we can write that t1 and the position vector from a to b can be determined by traveling from a along the x y and z axis in order to reach that point b so from a we need to travel a uh, 30 feet distance in the in the downward direction that is in the negative z or in the negative k so i will write minus 30 k so when we travel this distance we reach the origin so from the origin we need to travel this distance in the negative y direction that is in the negative j so this is 15 feet in the negative j and from here we need to travel 10 feet in the positive x so i will write uh, minus 15 feet in the negative j and 10 feet in the positive i so this is the position vector from a to b now we have to find the magnitude of the this position vector so the magnitude is 10 square plus 15 square plus 30 square under the square root and this this gives us 35 magnitude so this is approximately equal to this uh, this is exactly equal to 35 right so now we can write that t1 cartesian vector this is equal to so now we can we can write this as t1 divided by 35 so we have to multiply this t1 divided by 35 with the magnitude of each component so we can write that this is 10 t1 divided by 35 and the positive i minus 15 t1 divided by 35 and the negative j minus 30 t1 divided by 35 and the negative k so this will be if we simplify this 10 divided by 35 so this will give us 2 divided by 7 this is 5 into 2 is 10 and 5 into 7 is 35 so this is 2 divided by 7 so we can write that this is 2 divided by 7 similarly uh, this ratio is 3 divided by 7 so this is 3 divided by 7 and similarly this is uh, 6 divided by 7 so this is 6 so this is the cartesian vector representation of t1 now let's say we want to represent that t2 is a cartesian vector so again t2 so this is t2 magnitude times the unit vector from a to c since t2 is acting from a to c this is t2 which is acting from a to c so this is equal to t2 and the unit vector from a to c is again the position vector from a to c divided by its magnitude t2 we can find the position vector from a to c using that same method by traveling from a until we reach that point c so from a again we need to travel 30 feet in the negative z that is in the negative k so minus 30 k and once we reach here then we need to travel 15 feet distance this 15 feet distance in the negative x so i will write minus 15 i that is in the negative i so we will reach here and then from here we need to travel this 10 feet distance in the negative y so that is in the negative j so minus 10 j 
and again we have to find its magnitude so this is 15 square plus 10 square plus 30 square under the square root and again this will give us 35 this magnitude is 15 square plus 10 square plus 30 square this is again 35 right so again we can write that this is this is t2 divided by 35 and we can multiply that uh, ratio with each and every component of the position vector so t2 cartesian vector is minus 15 divided by 35 t2 in the i minus 10 divided by 35 t2 j minus 30 divided by 35 t2 in the k again we can simplify this is uh, 5 into 3 15 and 5 into 7 so this is 3 divided by 7 so this is 3 3 divided by 7 this is this is 2 divided by 7 and similarly this is uh, 6 divided by 7 this is 6 divided by 7 now we have to represent the tension uh, t3 as a cartesian vector so t3 you can write that t3 cartesian vector this is equal to t3 uh, its magnitude times the unit vector from a to d so the unit vector from a to d t3 magnitude is to be determined so t3 magnitude is not known so this is t3 uh, times the unit vector from a to d so we have to write t3 and the unit vector from a to d is the position vector from a to d divided by its magnitude this is t3 and the position vector from a to d can be determined using that same method so again from a we need to travel 30 feet in the negative z that is in the negative k so minus 30 k and then from here we need to travel 12.5 feet distance 12.5 feet distance in the positive y that is in the positive j so plus 12.5 in the positive j and there is no need to travel in the x direction so 0 i and now we have to find its magnitude so this is 0 square plus 12.5 square plus 30 square so this is 0 plus 12.5 square plus 30 square this gives us 32.5 so this is 32.5 or we can say that this is t3 divided by 32.5 so now we can write that t3 cartesian vector this is uh, 0i if we multiply um, this ratio with each magnitude so this is 0i plus 12.5 divided by 32.5 t3 in the positive j minus 30 divided by 32.5 t3 in the k so let's simplify this 12.5 divided by 32.5 this gives us 500 5 divided by 13 let me write this is 5 divided by 13 so this is 5 divided by 13 t3 and 30 divided by 32.5 this gives us 12 divided by 13 so this is 12 divided by 13 and now we have to represent that force f which is developed in the in the antenna tower as a cartesian vector so that force f is a cartesian vector this is equal to so since that force f is acting in the positive z direction so we can write that its i component and its j component they are zero and that is f in the positive k now since this uh, antenna tower is in equilibrium so we have to apply the equilibrium conditions and we know that the summation of forces along x that must be equals to zero so we have to add up all the i components so this is 2 divided by 7 t1 2 divided by 7 t1 that is plus 2 divided by 7 t1 then minus 3 divided by 7 t2 minus 3 divided by 7 t2 and the i component of t3 is 0 and the i component of force f is 0 so this means that this is equal to 0 
and from this we can write that 2 divided by 7 uh, we can say that uh, 3 minus 3 divided by 7 t2 is equal to 2 divided by 7 t1 if we multiply both sides of equation by 7 so 7 will cancel out and we can write that this will become minus right and minus sign will also cancel out so we can write that t2 is equal to 2 divided by 3 t1 similarly if we apply the summation of forces along y that must be equals to 0 so we have to add up all the j components so the j component of t1 is minus 3 divided by 7 t1 so minus 3 divided by 7 t1 then the j component of t2 is minus 2 divided by 7 t2 minus 2 divided by 7 t2 and then the j component of t3 is 5 divided by 13 t3 so plus 5 divided by 13 t3 and the j component of force f is 0 as well so this is equal to 0 now in the problem statement it is said that if the tension developed in either cable ab or ac cannot exceed 1000 pounds so the tension in cable ab is t1 in our case and the tension developed in cable ac is t2 in our case so the t1 and t2 cannot exceed 1000 pounds right so if the tension developed in either cable ab or ac cannot exceed 1000 pounds determine the maximum tension that can be developed in cable ad so cable ad means that we have to find the uh, tension developed in cable ad that is we have to find t3 magnitude so we have to assume that let's say that let's assume that the tension in cable AB uh, which is T1 is equal to 1000 that is the maximum limit is 1000 pounds let's say that the the cable AB uh, holds the maximum tension that is 1000 pounds so then if we if we assume that T1 is 1000 points we, uh, pounds we can find T2 so T2 will be 2 divided by 3 into 1000 so this is um, 2 multiplied by 1000 divided by 3 this gives us uh, 666 666.67 pounds and if if our assumption is right so t2 must be uh, less than 1000 pounds. T2 cannot exceed 1000 pounds. The maximum limit for T1 and T2 is six and, uh, is 1000 pounds. So if T1 carries 1000 pounds, T2 cannot carry 1000 pounds. It, it must be less than, right? Uh, it it can be equal to 1000 pounds, but it uh, pounds, but it cannot be greater than 1000 pounds, right? So if T2 is T2 magnitude is less than 1000 pounds, we can say that our assumption is right. So in other case, if we assume that T2 is a thousand, if we assume that T2 is thousand pounds, then T1 is from this equation, T1 is three divided by two T2. So then three divided by two from this equation, we can write that T1 is Three divided by two t two and three divided by two is one point five and one point five times thousand will give us fifteen hundred pounds. So t one is equal to fifteen hundred pounds and it is greater than thousand. And in the problem statement, it said that t one and t two cannot exceed thousand pounds. So by assuming t two equals to thousand pounds, t one exceeds the thousand pounds limit. So this means that the T1 can be equal to 1000 pounds, but T2 cannot be equal to 1000 pounds since uh, T1 and T2 are related to each other. So if T2 is 1000 pounds, then T1 will be greater than 1000 pounds. So this assumption cannot be right. So this assumption is accurate. Now, once we know uh, T1 and T2, we can find T3 using this equation. So we can write that minus 3 divided by 7 T1. Now T1 is 1000 pounds 
according to the assumption minus 2 divided by 72 is 666.67 plus 5 divided by 13 t3 and this is equal to 0 so uh, minus 3 uh, into 1000 1000 divided by 7 and minus 2 into 666.67 divided by 7 so this gives us minus 619 approximately plus 5 divided by 13 t3 equals to 0 and t3 which is the tension developed in cable ed is uh, 5 divided by 13 equals to 619 or we can say that t3 is 13 divided by 5 if we cross multiply so this t3 is 619 multiplied by 13 divided by 5 so this gives us t3 1609 approximately pounds so the tension developed in that cable ad will be equal to 1609 pounds if t1 is at maximum tension that is thousand pounds now at the end we have to find the force developed in that uh, antenna tower which is acting at point a in the upward direction so for that we have to apply the summation of forces along the z axis that must be equals to zero so the summation of forces along z is equal to zero so we have to add up all the k components so the k component of t1 is uh, minus 6 divided by 7 t1 so this is minus minus 6 divided by 7 t1 and t1 magnitude is known which is 1000 then the k component of t2 is um, minus 6 divided by 7 t2 so minus 6 divided by 7 t2 and t2 is 666.67 and similarly the k component of t3 the k component of t3 is minus 12 divided by 13 t3 so minus 12 divided by 13 t3 is 1609 and the k component of force f is this plus f so plus f and this is equal to zero so now uh, minus 6 into 1000 divided by 7 minus 6 into 666.67 divided by 7 minus 12 divided by 13 multiply by 1609 so that force f developed in that antenna tower at point a is uh, this is this is minus 2914 approximately so this is 2914 plus f this is equal to zero and we can say that this f is 2914 pounds so if t1 is 1000 pounds t2 is 666.67 the tension in cable ac and the tension in cable ad is 1609 pounds and the force f at point a is 2914 pounds so this is the solution of this particular problem i hope this will help you in your learning do subscribe engineers academy for the solution of such more problems from hebla statics